Hi, this is Chris Meyer of Cybermotion, and I want to show you some lighting tricks inside After Effects, some ways to create vignettes, and some ways to create some really interesting hot overexposed looks. Also ways to create nice metallic or shiny or reflective looks in After Effects. Now all of these do use 3D lights in After Effects, but this does not mean you need to go flying about in 3D space or have an understanding of how to create 3D models or even create a 3D world. These are very simple tricks that you can use on full frame footage or simple text layers. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now here I have a very simple composition with a single 2D full frame video layer. Let's go ahead and add a new light to this. Do layer, new, light. The keyboard shortcut is command, option, shift, or control, alt, shift, L for light. Now you'll get these light settings and there is no default light. It always remembers the last light you created. For this effect, we'll be using a spotlight as it's the most flexible light and will create the sort of vignetting that we like. We'll start with intensity at 100%. Cone angle 90 is how wide the light is spread. That's a good starting point. Cone feather 50% is a good starting point too. And we'll start with a color of white. We can change any of these later, but these are good starting points. We click OK, and we get a warning from After Effects. Cameras and lights do not affect 2D layers. To light any layers in After Effects, you do need to put them into 3D space, but it's not that hard. Click OK. There's my light. Here's my layer in After Effects. And all I need to do is enable the 3D layer switch for this particular layer. Click it on. The layer doesn't move in space, but now we have the effects of our lighting. And we have quite a severe drop-off, quite a severe vignetting going on. Let's tweak that up a little bit. Let's select our light. And first off, let's make the light a lot easier to control. Spotlights normally have two points to them. The back of the light, which we can move around, and the light's point of interest, which is where the light is aiming. Now steering both of these can be like steering both ends of a long fire truck, and we don't need that complexity for this effect. So pick Layer, and After Effects 7, look underneath Transform, and open the Auto Orient dialog. And the keyboard shortcut is Command Option O on Mac, or Control Alt O on Windows. And we'll turn Auto Orientation off. Click OK. And now we can just move our light by picking up the back and moving it around. When you move lights in After Effects, if you see one of these little arrows turn up like X, Y, or Z, you're going to be moving it only in that axis. But to freely move a light, just move the cursor just a little bit off the center to where you don't see a letter, then just pick it up and drag it. So here I've got it centered over the eye. Now I want to open it up so I can see more of my image. With the light layer selected, type P for position, just like any other layer. This third parameter is its Z depth, its position in Z space, forward and backwards. And we just need to scrub this value to go ahead and back off the light in space. There we've backed it off a little bit so we have a little bit more of our vignette effect. And I'll go ahead and pick up the light and recenter it. Now beyond positioning, you can go ahead and change a lot about how this light is feathered and how wide of a cone of light it casts. There's a couple ways of opening the light's parameters. You can double click and get the same dialog you had when you created the light. Or if you want to play around with things inside the timeline panel, select the light and type AA. I joke that AA stands for Animators Anonymous because you are getting in deep when you get into this stuff. The light's cone angle is how broadly it broadcasts the light. So you can go ahead and tighten up your spotlight or broaden it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and tighten it down a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. Then cone feather is how the light falls off. If we go ahead and increase the feather, we have a nice soft fall off. It almost always takes away from how broad the light is broadcast. It doesn't necessarily make it wider. Or if we go down to a very small feather, we can go all the way to a very hard edge spotlight. For a vignetting effect, you might want something fairly soft. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up. Let's go ahead and increase our cone angle. And there's our nice little vignetting look. Not too bad. Okay, so here's the real trick to lights. See this intensity parameter? You might think it can only go down, and you might think its maximum is 100%, but in reality, you can crank up lights beyond 100%. And as you start doing that, you start getting these really bright, burned out, overexposed looks, really interesting special effects that you might normally have to shoot that way, but it's easy to add this after the fact to any footage and after effects. Now the thing with lights is that their default of 100% intensity, they tend to reduce the amount of illumination inside a composition. This is with no lighting, this is with the light turned on. It has to do with the way the light's being reflected back to your eye. 
But by increasing the intensity, you can compensate for this. So even if you don't want these bright blown out looks, you may find yourself increasing intensity beyond 100% just to create a more pleasing, more aesthetic look to it. The cone angle has a very similar effect to moving the light back and forth in Z space. I'm going to hit Shift P to reveal position as well. And again, this is a way of tightening up the light. When you're doing something very simple, like full screen video such as this, you can use either the Z position or the cone angle to go ahead and control how wide the light is cast. No big difference. The second thing I want to point out is if all you want to do is edit just the intensity of the light, select the light, and hit T, same as opacity. This time it's T for intensity, and that will reveal just the intensity parameter. 